What's up, guys? So, uh, you know, just just like the title says, Andrew and I wanted to jump on today to talk about what it takes to stick into the business and to grow in the business. Uh, This is coming from a couple of people who have a lot of experience now. Uh, Andrew has been in the game for a minute and he's he's done some amazing things and he's still on that big time trajectory, uh, growing his team, uh, doing more and more every day and and doing something that a lot of people struggle with. And that's taking advice of mentors and applying that advice so that he can start seeing results. Uh, I would say that, uh, Andrew, you know, seeing what you've done so far so from the time I got to meet you at, at a Medicare con to where you're at today, it's been a real pleasure to, to see it. And along the way, we've had so many laughs together. We've become good friends. Um, and I really appreciate your friendship on top of everything else, man. So uh, thanks for jumping on. And let's uh, let's kind of break down some stuff today about uh, what it takes to stick in this business and to grow in this business past the failure point that most people will reach, right? So for sure. uh, obviously that statistic's been made famous by Cody Askins with the 92% dropout after uh, within three years of being in the business. Uh, how many years now have you been in the business? I'm going on 10 plus years, but let me, let me start with this, Eric. Yeah. Let, let's not skip over your accolades. Um, you know, Eric, I consider you my friend, also a good mentor, you know, in this industry, there's a lot of people that you're going to run into, and then there's going to be the select few that you're going to roll with. Right. My, my, my people out there, you know who you are, obviously. Right. Uh, I mean, my circle is pretty small in this industry. Um, Eric's a really good friend of mine. I mean, just from the jump, you know, we, we got along. Eric is who he is. I mean, he's been at the top of the top in terms of hierarchies. You know, he's had millions and millions of dollars worth of agent production, self-production, you know, what whatever it is. So he's been up and down the whole game. And, of course, now he's, uh, you know, it, well – it's not private anymore. He's he's definitely an insurance uh, agency owner and also the owner of um, a go high level DFY, um, yeah. go high level as well too. Um, there's so many good go high levels out there, and then I guess we could talk about that a little bit if since um, you're pretty good at that too, Eric. But I just wanted to thank you for uh, yeah, just being a friend. You know, it's we, we need to be friends in this industry, right? Like you know, being competitors and all that stuff. That's the yeah. thing of the past. You know, I love, you know, everybody just getting along, you know, and uh, everybody working together. So here we are doing this. This is monumental stuff. Monumental <laughs> stuff. Amen. Huge. Amen. Huge. So, dude, yeah, I, I want to I wanna know, like, first and foremost, like, the a lot of agents want to do well in this business. They see the potential. They see yep. the potential of the residual income from the health side, from the Medicare side. Um, they see that the people who are, you know, growing books of business and selling books of business. So there's a couple ways, right? There's there's a group of people who are just looking to grow and enjoy running an agency, and then you have other um, other agents who their mind is more on the exit game, right? And 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 there's nothing to, there's nothing wrong with either side. It's really just what's going to drive you to get up every day, stay disciplined, and keep putting one foot in front of the other. So I want to know, you know, so that for those who haven't uh, heard your story, you know, when you first got in the game, what is it that that kept you going when you finally decided you were going to go independent and be completely on your own? Yeah, I mean, it's the same as everybody else, but I, I mean, some people start off different, you know, some people have a, a legacy to fulfill, like, you know, their parents were... Uh, in the industry and they were t- either taking it over or making it better uh, one of the two so there's those type of agents uh, there's agents that have no experience with anything sales related or, or just completely green right nothing that has to do with insurance they've never sold anything they've never even uttered the words deductible or not anything like that they're green right um, and then there's agents who have worked either in the carrier capacity or at a call center or at an agency itself uh, and maybe could have ran the day-to-day or whatever the case is. I am in category C, right? I, I started off at a call center, uh, and that's where I learned, again, my chops. If you guys have watched my other YouTube videos, you guys sort of know my history. 
uh, or my story on that. Uh, so that's where I learned everything is uh, at the call center, you know, just the ins and outs of how the industry works, ins and outs of products, ins and outs of building uh, specific products for clients. Uh, so I've learned that. The only issue was, for some reason, in the industry where every year you're supposed to compound uh, residual income, every year I was actually making less money. And that was mm. sort of a red flag for me. And mind you, I, you know, I was doing still the same amount of production. Real, yeah. real talk. Now, um, first year, you know, I was a, I was one of the top producers. You know, six figures uh, first year, right? Just doing ACA uh, and ancillaries, and then uh, what was my that? Bad. My bad, my bad. Go, go. Oh yeah. Um. So from there, uh, you know, you have your. I went from a hundred thousand to like we started going less and less and less, fifty thousand, and then all of a sudden you know, I get laid off. So I actually didn't have a choice. Um, I got laid off because the chargebacks caught up to these people um, yeah. and they didn't have enough uh, sales for the amount of chargebacks um, that came in. So I've learned the good and the bad. Thank goodness from that. Um, and from there, I was like, well, I I, I wasn't starting my own agency at the time. Uh, I wanted to PNC for a little bit um, just to see if that's going to be a good fit for me. It wasn't. So... <laughs> I did the same so, thing, dude. I did I did PNC for a minute, and uh, I think I did it for eight eight months, maybe. And it just wasn't my cup of tea. It was, uh, it, it I don't know, it wasn't. And not to say, not to knock anybody who's in it. Um, it just again, like you're saying, some people can gravitate more towards it and get through the grind of it, and some people are just like, ah, I want something different. It's like every single thing, especially in California, um, especially like <laughs> every single MVR report that you're looking up, <laughs> it's like, I know that there's going to be something there and I'm not going to make the sale. And <laughs> it was just constantly <laughs> that every day. <laughs> and so I'm like, man, this stinks. Um, so I make the least amount of money I've ever made in my life. It was like $24,000. I mean, not the least, but professionally. Um, so that like so twenty four thousand in California would be like ten thousand dollars. Just kidding. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you're gonna put in inflation, uh, if you're in, yeah, that's basically what it is. Yeah, cut it in half. Uh, and this was back in the day too. So, um, but twenty four thousand. I mean, you still couldn't survive off. I mean, I was scrapping for whatever you know, going to wherever had free food and. You know, towards the end, it started yeah. getting pretty mis like weird. Like I'm like, do I deserve this? Am I is this the kind of life that I am leading? Like, what what is my problem? Right? Yeah. Like, what what's the deal? What's happening with me? Like, twenty four thousand. Like, aren't aren't you like good at anything else? Like, you're having all these conversations with yourself, and um, it started to really eat at me. It really started to have because I'm I'm always like like happy go lucky guy and i'm always you know up for uh i'm always down to clown but you know just at a certain you, you reach a breaking point where it's a, you're at a crossroads where you're like okay hey look you know you've you've lived your life like this so far and this is the results you're at are you happy with it my answer was absolutely not and it probably is still the same no right now it's the same answer right yeah yeah he's really really content but at the t at the time i was like man if i can just have three thousand dollars in my pocket every month i'm i'm content you know yeah. like i am so good everything is fine i can pay my rent and i have a little bit of money for food and maybe a little fun too right like and then just n nothing saved up or anything like that just really bad habits it really came down to ground zero uh or my breaking point when you know, I had 600 bucks in my bank account and I was like, what? Like, is this, I, I'm on like a, a ham, uh, like basically a hamster wheel at that point financially. Yeah. And I'm like, what the heck do I have to do to make it? I was trying Amazon FD, F, what is it? FBA. I even, yeah. What, I don't even know what it's called. Let me, let me ask you something real quick though. Um, In the midst of the struggles, like in your lowest points of, of your sales career, um, and cause I've had this happen to me and, and I feel like it's enough when you're questioning yourself, but did you ever have your parents or somebody who you care about, like ask you, dude, like, why are you still in sales? Like, why don't you just get a normal job and stop trying to do this sales thing? Like, why do you keep doing this to yourself? Yeah. My, my mom was a pretty, I would say she was sort of a supporter. Um, 
I'm in, in the Asian household. I started off doing door-to-door -door sales from Dish Network, so, um, and I'm moving from rural area to rural area in the Midwest. Yeah. Um, no, no parents really happy about that. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, that's a that's a uh, tough gig door to door, man. It really is. And I know there's a lot fun. of a lot of FE guys who are like that's still like a, a solid way to to do it. I get it. Um but yeah, it, it's a tough gig. And and I know again with with parents who grew up in a different generation from us who were really uh entrenched in their minds to believe a different way of you go to college you get a good education you get a job you stay there for 40 years you retire right um to see us who are just like we we don't we don't want that we're trying to do something different we're trying to earn what we're worth because so often people in those salaried positions like they don't actually earn what they're worth and you know, for me, the biggest driving factor for wanting to be independent is to say, hey, you can't put a cap on me. You can't say that I'm only worth paying at the most, you know, let's just say $200,000 or whatever after after serving X amount of years and helping to run a business that's making millions and millions per year. I, I just, I didn't want to be in that position anymore. Yeah. I wanted to be in a position where I can earn what I'm worth, which is always why even in the midst of people telling me, hey, why are you doing this sales gig? Like, why don't you quit? Stop doing that. Go get a regular job. I kept pushing forward because I had to believe in myself. And sometimes you do. You have to be your only cheerleader and push through some of the toughest times, you know, so that you can get to where you want to be. And that's what I loved about you. One of the things that I remember you telling me is that you're in your mind, the way you envisioned it is that you had a gun to your head and you had no other choice but every single day to make X amount of dials, go and do X amount of conversations. Like uh, even, even in terms of sales, like you're like, I can't finish until I've made this extra sale. Um, that's that mentality that is very difficult to execute. And I want to know, like, is there some, like, how did you almost trick your mind into doing that? So you can just, cause so many other people could just be like, you know what? I, it's been such a long day. I got cussed yeah. out a lot on the phone. I just, I'm going to call it a day. I'll try again tomorrow. But you didn't do that. Like you were just like, no, I can't until I can't until yeah. this is done. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a combination of I didn't have money. <laughs> so that's going to be a huge driving factor. If you're hungry, you're yeah. going to have to find something to eat. Uh, so that was one thing. Another cool thing uh, is competition, just having friendly competition with your um, at the time, I had people I was competing with. I loved being on the leaderboards. At any at Anywhere I worked, I was always leaderboard something. Yeah. And I always loved being on the leaderboards um, just to know that I am a competitor. And this is, I mean, I really think this is a sport. We get, we're get we athletes. We get paid for this. But Amen. Uh, it's a mental sport. You know, yeah. it really is. And, so and, I, I, and I do always, I see you on them DVH leaderboards uh, with Manhattan Life and getting on them trips and going and having a good time. Which is yeah, awesome I, because, yeah. right, ACA don't send anybody on trips. <laughs> Neither does Medicare <laughs> Advantage. You need to be writing that meds up. You need to do doing the ancillary, doing the life insurance. That's how you get on those carrier trips. Exactly. I mean, if ACA did, I mean, uh, shoot. It's know, an old different but, story. Right, exactly. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there was very much like a figurative gun to my head. I even took it to the extreme. Um, I, the reason why I was doing that is because I was just that – um again hungry that um driven to be to beat my competitors again friend, friendly competition not like i hate you competition but like look, look at my numbers and i keep i keep slaying you all right who's next right yeah. like more like like the you know the playoffs or something you know you're just knocking people out uh yeah. let me see who i'm better than and once you push yourself to try to be better than the best which you know, it wasn't the case at the place I was working. I wasn't the best, uh, but I was damn near close to, you know, getting to, you know, the crown, right? Like I was yeah. close to, you know, removing the crown, but I never did. But in, in my world now, you know, it, it's the reason why I had to do all that stuff is so I can live the reality I'm living now. Like I had to, again do weird stuff in terms of marketing just really really talking to everybody just doing whatever i could like don't asking don't ask for any permission just just forgiveness to you know where you're supposed to set up booths or 
uh, not not like Medicare booths, but like ACA booths, and you know, just sort of just you know grabbing you know whatever whatever you have to do to sort of make yourself uh, make sales and yeah. market yourself, and you know, go online if 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 you're on a buy and sell group, and they're like, no, they're declining it. I continuously kept, you know, yeah, <laughs> like posting in there, you know, I kept posting in there. Um, so I was just adamant about everything. But the good thing is, because I worked at that call center, I had good information. So I mean, a lot of new agents need good information. That's what's lacking. Um, so that's why you have to reach out to mentors, um, network with people in the industry. Uh, and also, you know, give back, be a good person about it, right? Like Eric has taught me so much. Um, I've had my friends, Christian, my friends, Glenn, Shelton, my friend, uh, I, I would call it, you know, Justin Brock, you know, the, these people are people that I've learned from, right. From afar. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now I am here, you know, on a zoom with Eric Fierro, you know, one, one of the people I looked up to. So, you know, just the longer you stay in the game, the more cool stuff happens to you. Um, but definitely if you're in phase, if you're in that second category, category B, where you don't have any assistance, you better damn make sure to, to find the, use, use whatever you got to yeah. find that mentor and very much, you know, bring value, um, however you can, uh, back to either your mentor or whoever else you're trying to help. You know, so I would say get, definitely get a mentor. You, yeah. you, you were, you were killing it in ACA and. What's funny is, and I would love for people to comment where you met Andrew Lee. So anyone who's watching, if you've met Andrew Lee, where did you meet Andrew Lee? Except for you, Sandra. <laughs> and so what what I uh obviously what was funny for us is that I met you at a Medicare conference. And I want to know, you know, being that you were dominating the ACA space, like how how did Medicare get on your radar and how did you end up at a Medicare conference? Oh. Okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, Medicare and Cover California are sister products, obviously. Right. So th that's, that's a, no, that's a no brainer. I've, I've gotten too many, you know, when I was doing ACA, too many calls uh, or too many people that had spouses in the house, like they're six, turning 65, but their wife and they're getting off like an employer plan and their wife is 61. Um, or I'm sorry, I'm getting the wife a, a plan because they're getting, kicked off because the husband's going on medicare then right. i gotta help out the person on the husband on medicare so i mean it's pretty much the same carriers the same verbiage uh the, for the most part right out-of-pocket maximums deductibles co-pays uh, you know pretty much the same verbiage and uh just had to learn i, I mean it wasn't that much that wasn't so different from aca it really wasn't so it was a hand in glove fit uh, and i was leaving money on the table um, in the beginning, I was referring it out, um, just like how you know Medicare agents refer out ACA sometimes because they don't want to deal with it. Um, yeah. Same deal was happening to me, so I was like, I'm just gonna do this myself. Yeah. So then you heard about the first Medicare con, right? And you decided to go out there. I just love how you know, that the, the, the attitude that you had when you were approaching people was just great. You know, um, <laughs> you, I still remember the day you came up to me and you were just like, Hey, I see you on YouTube, dude. My name's Andrew Lee. What's going on, brother? And you just started hitting, talking to me in slang. And then another agent, you actually, you came up when I was talking to another agent. That's what made it funny. I was talking to another agent. You walk up, I think you'd already had a couple of drinks. So you were feeling loosey goosey and you start clowning on the other agent because he was still, he was still using facts and it, he started just going up. He, you know, what the, what the hell you're still using a fax machine? Like, are you serious right now? <laughs> and it was just, it was just funny. Face. Yeah. It was funny to see oh how, you, how you were roasting people. And, uh, you know, instantly I was just like, I like this guy. I want to be friends with this guy. And so obviously that's where we, we hung out more that, uh, that time. And then we started seeing each other at all the conferences and keep getting, you know, obviously kept talking and talking over the phone and all that stuff. So it was just awesome to see that you had no fear with just walking up, you know, and just starting to talk and, and just be you. Well, yeah, I mean, shoot. So I was, uh, my first, uh, how I got into this whole thing was, um, like uh, I was in that first group. I don't even want to mention them because I got kicked out. 
<laughs> but everybody sort of knows who I'm talking about. Yeah. And then I was in that group and then you start you sort of start meeting people like here and there, like trying to find people that are starting off or maybe on your same level or, you know, whatever the case is, same products. And then you sort of have these accountability buddies, right? Um, I, 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 I met, I think the first couple people I've met from like the group situation was like George Beach, if you're out there, shout out to you. Eric Chu, if you're out there, shout out to you. Um, I actually I accidentally um, was on Asian Hustle Network. It's like a Facebook group for Asians and I don't know. Hey, whatever. no lie. That's a cool name. Yeah. Asian Hustle Network. <laughs> Yeah, Asian Hustle Network. Sounds Man. like a Kung, Kung Fu channel. That's why you like it. But um, <laughs> it's uh, so Asian. So and then I met this one dude there. And then there's, of course, a bunch of recruiters that were like, yeah, you should meet up with me, blah, blah, blah and that. So I did all of that. And then um, I sort of w was like, no, I'm OK. Everybody here is a damn life insurance agent trying to recruit me. So like, I'm like, I'm out of that. You know, I'm trying to start my own my own thing. So let me see who like my you know, my counterparts in this are, and George Beach to this day, I still talk to him. Eric, hopefully you're doing great. Um, but that's how I started. I started off just like with, with some, like with, with that. And then they, and then you get introduced to other groups. And then I ended up at uh, like Justin Brock's group, like Christian's group. Um, I ended up, you know, there. And then from there, you start meeting other people, you find other content, you find content that's right for you, that's that's geared to you. You sort of watch some of like Eric videos in the past, let's say, uh, when I was, you know, like diving into that. Uh, I'm like, man, this guy really gets my whole story. It's like, but it's like common <laughs> stuff at the time, you know, when I'm like a new agent, but I'm like, this guy gets it. Yeah, yeah let me keep watching <laughs> and then you just keep doing that. And of course I had to come up to you and say, hey, look, I like your style. We're gonna get along. You're gonna like me. You and actually did say that. I know, Joe. You said that shit. That's what stuck out to me is that you just—it's like you were making this proclamation that we were gonna be friends. Like you straight <laughs> up, you were just like, "We're gonna be friends. You're gonna like me, bro." And then, and then you started making me laugh like crazy. So, you, you, yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome to see well, that. Well, uh, I, that's the first um, night I met Christian too. So I met uh, Christian Brindle, if you guys don't know, bef uh, right before I met you. Yeah, so those are two crucial um, relationships I have in my life right now in terms of, um, you know, insurance that that happened at the same time. So it was uh, that that's sort of the power of of that kind of stuff with networking. Right. Like you get you, you meet your the people that you, you feel like you need to link up with. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm getting that now, too. These days, it's like, man, I like your stuff on YouTube. Like, it's just no filter. I love it. You know, like, yeah you know let, let's be friends right yeah so same deal it's 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 uh it's it comes back around it's it's super um, surreal but it's cool well, huh yeah um yeah so i think i think that's that's a key thing right from networking is also important from for, for somebody who's just getting started as well i think you need to surround yourself with people who are uh, doing the game at a, at a higher level that are doing well, but that are also willing to help you out. Um, you know, you're, you're obviously the one thing that's a little bit dangerous sometimes is that people can immediately start comparing and being like, why am I not there? Why am I not here? I wish mm. I was, I wish I had that many clients. And then they end up, they end up holding themselves back because of that. Right. Um, yeah. and so we want to make sure that, you know, as advice to the new agent, that if that's you, you know, don't don't go comparing yourself to people who've been in the game a lot longer. It doesn't even make sense, right? It takes time, especially in any residual game. Obviously, there was this weird thing that happened in ACA where people were just swearing up and down. You could become a millionaire overnight with this, you know, no call <laughs> or no, you know, no, no, what is it? No call broker situation. And um, then obviously a system was being sold misrepresented like bad training and 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 it led to some some sanctions happening, right yeah <laughs> suspensions and sanctions happening to the rest of the good guys because of it you know and and to to make matters worse that book that you built like you look go look back and it's like you've lost half of it or more you know just as quick as you earned it so all that to say 
is that it does take time. It takes time to build in the business. Anything worth doing is going to take hard work and, and take time. Uh, but being around good people is such an important thing because those good people and those relationships that you start building in the future could lead to monetary relationships as well, right? Um, and so, you know, you, you're in Christian's downline now. And so you guys get to work together in that capacity. And that's a really big thing. Uh, I got to reunite with a longtime friend who is now my business partner in the agency uh, on the agency side, uh, not the DFY side, guys. Just let I get. There's also rumors people were spreading about me or that DFY was bought by Integrity. That is not true. DFY is not owned by Integrity. I am the sole owner of DFY. So I want to make that rumor dispel because if you hear it, know that it's a lie. That is not true. Uh, I do, on the other hand, have an agency separate, a different business with a partner, Clarissa Gonzalez, who is a longtime friend of mine. She's known me as long as I've known her or as long as we've been in the insurance game. And so uh, I got to to reignite our relationship together and uh, talk all at the conferences and and just see how much similarities we had and just said, you know what? I think the synergy is good that we should do something together. And that's why we decided to form uh, a partnership uh, on the agency side to be able to, to grow an insurance agency together, which we've been doing. And obviously you've seen that we did partner with integrity on the agency side that came from the networking side that came from, um, but it was time, right? Because we didn't jump right into that. We both had our own paths. We had a lot of skills that we were, uh, that we were, gaining through just time it takes time to gain certain skills and certain things and you become wiser with time so you make better decisions um that's that's ultimately where i want to really impress upon agents is that all of us want to get to making six figures as quick as possible but some of them just take a little more time unless you got a lot of money to invest most people who are getting started don't so you got to be willing to put in the time right i mean it didn't come super fast for you right no, no, it didn't. You know, it's funny. I was there when you met, uh, when you when you reunited with Clarissa. That was that was cool to see. I, I didn't think that you started a business together. Yeah, that, right. That was really cool to see again. Yeah, no, and it, it was great. Obviously, both of us being Latinos, that uh, we that's a that's a a common a commonality that that's actually a very strong uh, a strong thing. You know, when it's I, I don't know if it's the same with Asians, right? Other Asians meet each other. That nah, there's we don't a, like each other. Asians don't like each other. No, dude, I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe that, dude. That that's what I love. Like our conference. So we have so that's another thing that I partnered with uh with my buddies Tony Merwin, with uh, his wife Grace, with my partner Clarissa, with Nancy, um, and with Dina. Like we we are all Latinos who wanted to form a a, a conference. Alianza. All Spanish, right? Yeah. So we formed the Alianza de Gentes Latinos so that we could put a, a conference out called Invictus. And uh when you get 300 Latinos in a room, like it is the craziest feeling because you literally feel like you're with your entire family. Like you're just like, ah, my tios, my tias, my cousins, like my primos. Like it just, it all feels like family instantly. And so when you start partying together and you're dancing together, like it just, it literally feels like all of us are raised the same. <laughs> so all of us have this foundation, this immediate foundation that we can bond on. And man, that's such a cool thing. Yeah. You, are you no, serious? Sure. So Asians don't have that. Not really. I mean, uh, to an extent. I heard Filipinos. I heard Filipinos are 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 a lot like that. At least that's like, what Joe Joe Coy says on his uh, on his comedy special. Oh, don't don't. That's comedy. Uh, <laughs> he's you call very it, much... you're calling Joe a liar. No, I'm just saying it's just he embellish. I mean, it's just it's for comedy's sake. I mean, it's <laughs> not gonna. That's not. That doesn't have anything to do with like rival. FMOs that are Asians, which happens here. I live in Koreatown, Los Angeles, for God's sakes, uh, which <laughs> I have seen happen here. Uh, and then there's like, you know, ankle biter carriers that, you know, they fight over their. Anyways, they're, they're, yeah, there's some like, I don't know. We just got to, I mean, money's money. Everybody's, you know, calm and chill and around like when we're talking about money and then, you know, just very much like, you know, during the negotiating processes and like things like that, the, people are chill, but shoot, they'll, they'll do like Asians are crazy about money sometimes. So they'll do some <laughs> weird stuff. 
Um, but enough of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like enough. Of that. Um, so yeah, hey, not you know what? To, uh, yeah, <laughs> but you know, you know what? I, what I have fun doing with you, dude. Uh, it is guys. Why we we started doing our podcast, right? Our our, our two drink max podcast is just so that we can have a more unfiltered conversation about just culture topics that are hilarious. Uh, Cause I like seeing the little tangents you go down, you know, I like seeing the <laughs> Andrew mind right. and the different routes you like to go. And, and it's, it's always a lot of fun, dude. It's always a lot of fun. Yeah. No. So, but uh, just to get back to where you, what you were talking about. So um, yeah, I mean, if uh, you are starting your agency, it's not easy. I mean, my, my first year of sales coming into the insurance industry was pretty easy just because I had a script. I knew how to say it. I knew tonality. I knew everything I had to know about sales going in. So that was pretty easy for me. Yeah. What I didn't realize was being a business owner is freaking hard. Um, I was a great salesperson, but I was not the best business person, nor yeah. was I the best marketer, right? Right. So that those talents, I I was never I, I was never taught those talents, um, marketing especially because we got inbound leads. So marketing is like we didn't even have to like worry about marketing. It's just like oh, just you know, pay a lead company a, like for for inbound lead and you're good to go. Well, yeah, your job uh, was to clock in, get on the phone, answer those calls, and make the sale. And 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 a lot of times inbound leads are going to be way hotter leads. Like they're going to be, the intent is much the hotter. If they're the ones making the inbound call. The hottest, so, I mean, the um, well, these are, uh, well, these are leads that are called by telemarketers um, to get somebody on the line. And sometimes they're not the hottest, obviously. They're like just trying to get them on the line. Yeah. So once they make the transfer, I think they get their, whatever, their little commission or whatever they get. Yeah. Um, so no, not the best <laughs> all the time, but at least you're on the phone with them to convince them otherwise. So what know? was the biggest, what was the biggest hit in your face when you decided to go fully independent? Like, was it the cost of doing business? Was it like, no. oh my God, I have to invest this much in, in leads in order to be able to talk to so many people? Like, what was it that, what was the biggest like slap in the face that was just, like gave you that wake up call? Mm, I would say, I mean generating leads was definitely i mean the hardest part or biggest thing that i worried about um because again all i needed was three thousand dollars to survive that's all that was in my head when i first started three thousand yeah. dollars to survive move back home you know i'm like basically just grinding every single day if i don't make a sale today then i better make two tomorrow if i don't make one, uh, another sale today and i zero i, I donuted zeroed out um, two days in a row, then I have to make three sales the next day. Like that was sort of my mentality. If I keep like not catching up to it, then I'm screwed. Compounds. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I I had to do that. Like I had to be super strict to myself. I quit drinking. I um was on like a strict diet. I was on like just straight hustle, get it together mode. Um, there's been some. There was some bumps in the road in terms of business. Uh, with getting like licensing and stuff like that um, there was some bumps in the road of me buying s leads from a stupid place and wasting a bunch of money um, there were bun bumps in the road with fmos giving me the wrong contract and not giving me the assistance that i actually needed at the time i mean i pretty much learned how to sell medicare by myself on youtube <laughs> yeah. i'm serious yeah i'm serious i'm dead freaking serious and that's why I, I loved watching your content, Christian, Brendel's content, Justin yeah. Brock's content, you know, when you, so like that, that's the kind of stuff that, I mean, a lot of agents out there here, like that's listening to this, that, I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, that you just sort of had to do what you had to do, but the difference between a nine out of 10 that survive uh, that, that one out of 10 that survives is we're, we're freaking rats. Like we're, we do everything we can to find food somewhere, Right everything we wow. can that image the imagery <laughs> um no but you get what i mean like we're cockroaches we'll survive a nuclear holocaust right it's it's that kind of mentality like yeah we're, we're like not going anywhere and if i'm giving up it's because i have physical disabilities um or if i'm mentally declining yeah if it's not for that 
I'm 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 still going at it, right? I'm I'm gonna go at it as a hundred percent as I can. You know, if other opportunities sort of present itself, then I'm gonna I'm gonna do that too in terms of, you know, making my money work for itself. I mean, be it stocks or be it, you know, maybe I, I've always preached not to do another business while you keep your plan B, your plan A. Um, but sometimes there's opportunities that come in a way. Um uh, diversify. So, well, I think it's okay. I think it's okay to start diversifying once you have solidified a base, out. you know, Precisely. and your base is, is solidified. And what is it then? So, so what was your next step? Because you're now scaling. You're no, you're no longer in single agent mode. You're now in scaling mode. You're trying yeah. to grow to uh, another point, another goal that you have in mind. Yeah. What's the first step you took for that? You know, because again, it, yeah. every, everything that's scary about being a business owner is risk, right? Anytime there's risk yep. involved, that's the, where the decisions get difficult. So yeah. what was that decision, that next step for you? Uh, it was aligning myself with the right people um, and then making sure I'm not caught up in the drama. All I'm thinking to myself is, you know, like just hire people that are good for your culture just like very i mean i i've learned some of some cool things from obviously a, a little a little bit of um everything from you know different people you know yeah. like what type of people to hire like a disc assessment test like um people who i mean i i you know you can get lucky with hires really um i very much got lucky with mine um and you know, it's, it's, I mean, hiring is. Wait, wait, can I drop really something hard. real quick too? Just cause you know, the, the cool thing uh, about the hire you did or the person you have now is that she has the same name as a good friend of ours, uh, <laughs> which is like so crazy, Amazing. you know, that, uh, you know, cause Tony, and I think Tony was watching a little bit ago. His, his wife's name is Grace Avila and uh, <laughs> Grace Avila Merwin, but Grace Avila. And so that is what we, <laughs> you were like, hey, hey, Tony, no lie, dude, no lie. The person I hired, her name is Grace Avila as well, and it just that's just wild. It's wild. It is wild. It and is and she's, wild. is she is she also uh, Colombian? No, 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 Caucasian. Um, what? How does she? <laughs> so she married and she married a yeah. Hispanic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that yeah, that's hilarious, right? Um, yeah. But um, no, so so yeah, so I'm I'm. Um, hiring her, I mean, I already hired her. Uh, she's been with me. Um, and I need to hire more, right? I mean, I'm, I'm always interviewing people. Um, you know, but it, it does get pretty hard in terms of, you know, people who can't follow simple directions, people that are psychopaths. <laughs> just, they, they're just, you do run into people. them. You do run into them. Yeah. Heck yeah, you do. Um, and like what their true intent is. I, I do have a pretty good, um, my, like I have a pretty good intuition, intuition. Yeah. for people that are, you know, good or not. Um, and it could be, but sometimes I could be completely wrong, right? Like the eye test and the interview and everything worked out. And then all of a sudden the true habits kick in and you're like, ah, crap. So got the wrong one here. Tiffany was asking, um, how many years was it before you saw your business take off? Take off. What is the definition of take off? I would assume, I would assume it got to the place where you started making more than what you originally planned for. So if your plan was three thousand, oh. how long did it take for you to finally like to start seeing that you've gone past that and you're growing? I gotcha. Um, well, it was uh so my first year, I think I made around like sixty three thousand or something like that as an independent agent. Um, and how? But again, so, but again, let me and let me preface that because sixty three thousand is great, but he lives in L A, which is one of the most expensive places in America. And on top of that, though, to even like sixty three thousand, like that's pretty decent for your first year. But just like he said earlier, like he's a, he was skilled already because he yeah. put in the yeah, time yeah. at a call center to learn the game under someone else's dime, which is actually a smart thing to do in a lot of cases. You know, instead of just going completely brand new into into the game, like to to train under somebody and be on somebody else's dime, um, that just made hitting the ground running a lot easier for you. I, I would assume. 
Absolutely. I knew the ins and outs of how, how, how the lead, I just need to get the lead, right leads. That's like, that was been my only problem, like forever, Yeah. uh, is getting the right leads. Uh, Yeah. everything else, I know the system of how to sell. I know a talk path. I know all the scripts and just everything about the sale. I can break down scientifically, even if I had to, right. Yeah. Um, I know everything about that script, uh, But so, yes, I did have that. That's why I was bringing up, you know, my my background is because there's three different types of agents. It's just, you know, one that can inherit a book and then do something with it. Um, someone that has worked in the field like me before for somebody else or somebody that's just uh, a, a just savage from day one, which Yeah. a lot of them exists. Yeah. A lot of them do exist. They're not rare. Um, it's funny. So Franco was making a comment. He said that uh, there was nothing when I started. No Facebook group. No YouTube. Uh, I I needed you guys. It, that's that's one of the things, right? In business, it's uh, it is it's one of those things where you you see you see where there's a need, and then you try to fill that need. And I remember. Um, you know, back then, Justin Brock and I, uh, you know, that we were talking about that because uh, the way Justin got into the the Facebook group thing is through an FE guy and the FE guy showed him. He's like, hey, let's start a, a, a Medicare group. Then that guy just bowed out of it. And then Justin's like, hey, you want to help me run this? So, uh, you know, I think we saw early on there was a need to share information without keeping it close to the chest, because for so long, that's how people operated was to keep information close to the chest, not sharing anything about what it takes to scale unless unless you were affiliated with them so we just thought well hell we're not in the recruiting game like we're just uh we're just guys who at the time you know he was starting to grow uh you know what's now bbi and i was running a call center and we're just like let's just share what's working let's share like what kind of ads work what kind of you know sales techniques work and stuff like that and that's where yeah i mean people were hungry they were starving for that kind of information which is why Facebook groups became so popular for a little while. Um, yeah, you know what's crazy, Eric? You know, also, like, you're known as the CRM guy, but, like, people don't know, like, how much freaking work and how much of a G you were at um, at Heartland. Yeah. Yeah, there was... There's definitely... It's been a ride, man. I'm, I'm so thankful for every chapter of my life. Um, I think it was at, uh, at Christian's event... One year where I actually, uh, my keynote was uh, basically starting over three times in the insurance industry, right? That I've had to start over three times because it's not always a clean trajectory, right, to the top. It's it's sometimes it's like things are looking good, the rug gets sweeped from under you, and then you got to figure out what's next. How do I start again? But the beauty of it is that every time I had more skill than I had before. And with more skill, I now have the ability to quit more quickly gets back to where I was and and then some and then go past it. So I'm always, I'm thankful for every season that I've had in life. Um, and to get to where I'm at. I, and again, I've judged the stuff we got planned, like, man, it's going to be awesome. The future is still looking really good. It's going to be awesome, man. But, but I appreciate you saying that it's, it's a hundred percent true, man. I've, I've been in the game 20 years, man. I've worked my ass off every time at anything I touch. Um, it's just how I operate. I really uh, am passionate about helping agents and I'm passionate about helping people in general. So it's definitely why I keep keep at it, even with all the ups and downs that are a part of the game. Let me ask you this. So now that you're uh, a integral part, I mean, again, I am scaling. You already know what where I'm at. Now that you're an integral part of um, an agency, right? Um, an integrity-based agency. What What are some tips for people who are maybe like me, or maybe um, that don't don't even have agents yet, or or even or planning to get into this industry to be at that level i know there's going to be a lot of work that goes into it you and clarissa both together have ye decades worth of experience so i totally understand that part but how, how do how does somebody get to where you guys are at like what is necessary to yeah. to to be at that level yeah time time is is absolutely crucial to it right because part of you know part of building something that people recognize and respect 
takes time and effort. And, and the reason you need time is because they got to see a track record that you are who you say you are, right? So if you're out there promoting that you take care of clients and this and that, like they want to see that day in and day out for years, like you are a stable institution that they can trust, right? Because that's what they want. The people, consumers are looking for stable institutions, not fly by night situations. But unfortunately, because of the way our industry is designed, like that happens far more often. We have people who come in for a very short season, leave, and and the clients kind of left like, well, shit, who do I go for for help now? Like, who do I help? Who, who do I reach out to? So it's important. That's why I say time is such an important thing. And branding is such an important thing because branding is that part of of creating that that stability in people's minds. Like they see your name over and over for for long periods of time. Um, that's why it's important to brand. And, and I think that as important as it is for you to start buying leads so that you can get in front of people so that you can make sales because that's absolutely necessary in the beginning part of your long-term goal should be to start controlling more and more of that marketing on your own so that you are advertising with your brand as well you're not just post posting social content with your brand but you're also going to start advertising with your brand so that you're seen far more often by far more people than most organic will reach right most people who are getting started right now aren't going to be able to grow a super large organic following. I think for for a lot of us, that time uh, has passed unless there's been unless a new social platform comes in that we can hop in on early. Um, I would just say though, it's still important to consistently try to post content for your brand. Uh, that way, people can go through and look at that. I tell people all the time. I think that it's going to be supremely important moving forward that content creation be a part of your everyday because more and more consumers are going to shop that way. They're Even if they see your ad, they're going to want to click over to your page and they're going to want to go and see your videos and they're going to want to see what is this guy really like? You know, how does he talk? How does he, how does he, you know, hold himself? Like, you know, what's his demeanor? Um, whether we want to believe it or not, like that's, that's the kind of thing people will look towards. They want to look for people they're relatable to because relatability equals trust. And we're talking about, you know, something that's very important to people, whether it be their life insurance, their health insurance, their Medicare insurance. These are very scary and important decisions for people to make. So they definitely want to make sure that they feel some type of trust towards the person they're going to work with. And that can easily be built with video. That's why I tell people all the time, like picture ads, when you're running ads, picture ads are great. Um, I think video ads ultimately are better, even though they're normally more expensive to generate a lead. The intent is going to be higher because they've gotten to watch your video, get a little feel of who you are, what you're about. And if they're still submitting that form for information, they must have liked what they saw. And that's a good, good thing for you because when you're getting on the phone with them, then they're going to want to, you know, they're going to want to be like, oh, you're the guy I saw on video. It happened right. a lot during my call center days too. Like we were generating so many leads per day. Um, and, and, and the call to action for people was like, Hey, you want our, we have a free video series that we're offering on the begin, like the basics of Medicare It's a six short, six short videos that you can watch right now. Um, here's the form you submit and we'll talk to you soon. They go through those videos. And then when the team's calling, they're always just, they were always asking for me. They were like, oh, is Eric there? Like, I'd love to just say hi. And I just want to thank him for the videos. And, and it's just really, it's a cool feeling because they didn't, they weren't seeing like hours and hours and hours of content from me, but what they did see delivered value and they really appreciated that value. So they wanted to talk to me and, and they wanted to just say hi and just thank me. I love that stuff, man. So that's why I think video is going to be such an important um, part of anybody's growth. Uh, moving forward, video, branding, content creation. Um, and and obviously you do need to, if you're going to grow at all, you do have to eventually have more staff. So you well, know. what about systems? Yeah, well, of course, systems are important. Uh, systems are, are one of the things that really has helped us to scale. Um, automations are at the forefront of what's helping to do several things from helping you get higher contact rates, which is a big deal, because for the longest time, we just had agents who all they did was make phone calls. And even at that, if you look at the statistics, they were only making two phone calls per lead, 
when it when it shows, I think 88 or 90% of leads don't answer until the 6th to 12th contact attempt. So all these agents, which were the far majority who are only calling on lead two times and thinking this is a crappy lead, you're setting your money on fire. Because if you would just follow through with the statistics show and try to call them eight times over the course of a week, you're going to have a much higher contact rate. But aside from that, if you open up other channels to communicate with them, you open up email, you open up SMS, yeah, Facebook Messenger, like if you give multiple channels uh, of a way for someone to communicate with you, that is going to increase your contact rate. Because another thing that we're seeing as we're as as the baby boomers are are aging in is that uh, more and more are starting to get, uh, have a very great familiarity with texting. They have grandchildren that text, their children text. And so whether they like it or not, they are starting to get used to the texting part of communication. And right. so for them, they they actually find it as a, a safer way to start getting information, you know, because they're just like, all right, I don't have to deal with someone being pushy on the phone or trying to do slick tactics or trying to use a silver tongue, right? All I have to do, if we're texting, um, they feel like they're controlling, they're controlling that conversation. But a good agent knows that if they're, you know, if they're if they're well versed in how to control conversations, they can do the same thing that you do over the phone on text, and then eventually lead them to getting on the phone to get the sale. So, um, yeah, systems nowadays are super important to help you with a lot of that automation of getting the conversation started. AI is now becoming the forefront of what a lot of insurance agents are starting to dabble with to utilize chatbots that can have very human sounding conversations with people to the point where they don't realize scary. they're talking to a bot, you know? Yeah, yeah, it is. It can get scary. Right. And so they, 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 uh, they're having those realistic conversations and the bot's job is just to answer questions and then try to book an appointment, right. So that you, an actual human can get on the phone and, and do your sale. So it's, uh, you know, th these are the things that are important. Retention, retention is probably one of the biggest things that systems yeah. can help you with because, the most overwhelming thing that you can have as a growing agency, again, when you're smaller and you have maybe 100 clients, you can do it all by yourself, right? You can call out to make more new sales. You can handle the retention side of things. But when you start growing to 500 plus, you you need systems to help you with retention. You need people to eventually help you with, with client resurfacing and retention. But systems can play a big part on the retention side just in the fact that the system can be reaching out to your client to check in with them without you ever doing anything. It's just automatically sending out messages on on their birthdays, on Christmas, on New Year's, on Valentine's Day, and they're thankful. They're always thankful because they feel like, oh, Andrew cares about me. He's checking in. Oh, thank you so much for checking, Andrew. I'm having a wonderful day. I hope you're having a great holiday as well, right? Stuff like that always comes back. They're very, very grateful. You technically didn't do anything except add them to your CRM. So yeah, systems are, are crucial. And and some of the cool things that we can do with systems um, and that we are going to continue to do with systems moving forward uh, are going to, they're going to really help to, to lighten the load for an insurance agent so that they can focus on what they do best, which is selling, right? That's mainly what we need to do, selling and servicing our clients. Boom, you know? So yeah, I mean, th that's what I, yeah, systems, I, I, I believe, are going for for where i am right now um it is actually my number one um priority really um like we were just talking about eric um systems are my my priority number one uh because without systems and leads you don't have a business and uh definitely want to work smarter not harder so um just makes life easier for you your agents everybody so yeah one thousand yeah. percent systems I saw um, I saw Tiffany's asking um, Eric, do you recommend agents have a certain amount of clients before purchasing a CRM? Yeah, so this is honestly um, everyone's going to have a different opinion on it. If you want my personal opinion, I think as soon as you can afford one, you should have one. So um, most 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 good robust systems out there will probably be about ninety seven bucks a month, hundred bucks a month. Um, you know, the phone portion of the system might cost you maybe another twenty to thirty bucks a month. I think it's incredibly important as soon as you can afford it to get it because the sooner that you can start having your system doing things for you, just the right from the jump, you're getting experience when it's, trust me, it's hard. It's, it's harder when you have a book of 500 to start trying to learn a CRM because 
at a book of 500, you have a whole set of a whole other set of uh, things going on from client servicing to, uh, you know, trying to grow, trying to make sure that people are getting renewal. Uh, you you want to you, you have a whole different set of, of issues. Right. So if you're starting when you have 50 clients, as an example, uh, 50 clients is more manageable where you can take an hour a day to learn the CRM that you just got uh, and do that for a couple of weeks. And so. If you want my personal answer, yeah, I think normally at 50 clients, if, if because that's normally where you can afford to pay that 97 a month, that's where I would uh that's where I would probably start. I I would start from the jump. So I mean, our industry is so easy to get into monetarily. We don't have to pay for anything to get in here. Like not not like a regular business would. We don't have to pay for you know, rent for an office space. Uh, we don't have to pay for, I mean, there are systems eventually what we're going to have to pay for, but you don't necessarily have to have it right away. Uh, right. You just need something for data storage, right? Uh, for for input uh, storage after you close a client, there's plenty of free CRMs for that. Yeah. Um, so you just go on like whatever, your HubSpots, your free Zoho's and all that stuff. If you just want basic level, I talked to this client about this on that date and I just want to remember what we talked about. So I don't get an allegation because I'm, I don't know what the heck just happened. Right. Right. So, right. I, I mean, you, I would say day one, you would need a, a CRM, an Excel spreadsheet is not going to do it for you. It's really not. <laughs> um, you, you 1000% need a CRM, uh, make it free. But again, the barrier to entry is low in this industry financially. Yeah. Guys, we're not buying a freaking restaurant where we have to get alcohol license uh, and then also uh, hire staff and, you know, hire bus, you know, already is that culturally appropriate to say bus boy these days? I don't even know. Like, I don't know what the, what the political, <laughs> <laughs> I heard you can't say homeless anymore. You got to say like, uh, unhoused. unhoused. Yeah. Be crazy. I just learned that today. <laughs> unhoused. Yeah. Um, what was the other one? Oh, you can't say, uh, master bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> no way. What do they call it then? <laughs> Owner's bedroom. Uh, the primary bedroom. <laughs> owner's bedroom sounds just as bad <laughs> we're not going to get into that but i'm just saying that's oh, not live today <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry that's that we'll say that for the two drink the two drink match two drink, yeah save it for that if i guess um <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know but i'm not politically correct is what i'm trying to tell you guys that i'm right right you know I, and i live in la it's a funny thing it's great um, it's, that's why i love it more because you live in la probably one of the most politically correct places it could ever be. <laughs> and you're like so opposite of it. And it just makes me laugh like crazy. Like, I just, I love it. I and love I it. live right in the heart of everything. So like where, and you know, it's, it's funny though. Cause like, I, I mean, this is still my area. This is still my hood. So they still accept, you know, any like, accept me for being in this area, obviously, but like yeah. we have different stances on things, but <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> but that, it, how beautiful is that though, right? That's you're you're hitting it right on the head where it's like you could have differences, but it's all good. It's all good. Like you don't gotta we on don't the have basketball to course, it's all good. It don't matter where you're from. Right. It doesn't matter how, how it ends, right? I guess yeah. it doesn't matter. Um <laughs> but I yeah, I mean but yeah, anyways, so um yeah, uh I, I mean you, you do have to have some kind of CRM in place. I mean, just don't Keep keep yourself so organized in the beginning so that you have a base of organization. Like even I would even say, hey, like I, I mean, I definitely wouldn't recommend it now, but get your LLC done before um, starting a court because that does two things, uh, or that before you start your like licensing, whatever. It does two things. It makes you first uh, get, giving you options for tax benefits if you're gonna be like an S corp facing you, uh, if you're gonna hire out. Um, things like that and number two you're actually going to treat it like a real business instead of the 1099 agent saying oh i can't do this oh i just you know i didn't i, I got these leads to call but i'm just not going to do it oh like you know whatever this other job sounds better it's forty five thousand dollars a year it's better than me not making any money right now oh you know that kind of stuff right that that that'll enter people's head so i mean if you're if you're gonna put if you're gonna burn some ships um, I mean, I would start an LLC first. I mean, that's something that I wish I did. Yeah. 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 I was told, I was told, wait until you're making 50 K in commissions to do it. So that's what I did. Um, but I, I think that, yeah, 
maybe even from a mental aspect that it gives you more of a commitment, right? To that, say, okay, I'm going to commit to this. I got this LLC. I invested 500 bucks or whatever to get this LLC. And so now I want to, I want to see it through better, right? I want to make sure that I am going to give it my all and circumstances happen. So it's like, the other thing is like, if people fail, cause people will fail, we've failed. Um, you know, you, you just always got to look at your circumstance and decide like what, what ultimately do you want out of your life? And, you know, if it's to to be the one who's controlling the ship and it's to be the person who can earn what you're worth and you're willing to uh, deal with all the gut aches that come with the stress that come with uh, running a business, then, you know, but you know that you can't answer to other people, <laughs> then, then, you know, you got to just brush yourself off, get up and keep going. Um, you can't, you have no choice. It's yeah. like having kids, right? I mean, I don't have any kids, but I'm going to allude to... Like you just have to wake up at five o'clock when yeah. your kid is like crying about something or that's the time that they wake up or yeah. you got to wake, you just got to do these things, right? Like, you know how mm -hmm. like, or your people... kid gets, your kid gets sick. And whereas like, normally when people are sick, we stay away from them. But once your kid, like I'm, I'm all up in right. there trying to take care of him, making sure he's okay. Even if it means risking me getting sick, um, you know, you got to take care of your kid. You just got to do what you got to do. There, there's a lot of absolutes in life, you know, do, do, like, so yeah taking care of your kid don't you know don't smoke while you're pregnant like yeah. it's <laughs> it's sort of on that kind of like like just like really treat this like like from the from the jump like you're it's your child right like yeah you know, you know just make sure everything's in place um and your you know your contracts are in order you got a good mentor right yeah. um eric doesn't really downline but um, I do. So, uh, if you're in California needing a mentor, obviously I can help you with that if it's health insurance. Um, but you know, you just have to have everything in line. You have to have everything stacked up, ready to go so that, um, uh, when it's time to actually launch, I mean, you're going to start slowly, but you're actually still ready. So in about a year later, you're going to thank yourself for doing all that. Yeah. Javad just, uh, he, he just chimed in. He's just like, hell yeah, I did my LLC right away. I took some crap from people, but 100% sets commitment. So that's yeah. right on, dude. Um, and he said he has five kids, five kids, one super sick right now with your infection. So he understands that you just got to do what you got to do, man. That's and that's God the thing. I, I think I think honestly, one of the one of the things that's hardest to see because not everybody Wait. is. One second. Well, what happened, bro? What happened? It's getting dark over there. I shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> one of the I things that well, one of the things I see though, you know, just the way some some people come into this into this um into this game very ill prepared, but it's not necessarily their fault that they were kind of like sold a bill of goods without knowing what's the, what it takes to get that. Uh, but with so much resource out there now, I just feel that you could either just say, okay, well that sucks, but you can still turn your own ship around, you know, or Maybe, maybe the you know the self employment game is not something that really is a good fit for you at this at this time. Doesn't mean it's never going to be a good fit, but you know sometimes people just have to work for someone, save up some cash to make that transition a little easier when you do have to go off on your own. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that, especially if this is like something you wanted to do. I mean, it's weird to think that people want to do insurance. I mean, that was definitely not on my list when I was a kid, but especially if this is something you're like, okay, financially, this makes sense. I've seen other people succeed in it. It's good product. I believe in it. Then don't quit. Cause once you yeah. quit, you're out, find a different solution. Yeah. Or for 100%. somebody else, get a better mentor, find another system, take some time off, go on YouTube, learn whatever you have to learn that you have inadequacies about, apply it, run it back again and then run it back again <laughs> until you finally get it. Yeah. If, as long as you're willing to apply what you're learning, like your chances of success will jump dramatically. I, a lot of people will just go and study YouTube. They'll watch the videos, but they won't apply the knowledge. So yeah. as long as you're willing to apply, knowing that there is a chance that it may not work out, right? That's the risk everybody takes in business, right? So it's like, there's a chance it may not work out. But yeah. as long as you're willing to try, it increases your chance of success dramatically because most people won't do that. They won't take that uh, that chance to apply it.
especially if you have no money or no job like some people are um already have a job and they're sort of one foot in one foot out as a you know just as a this is a residual income for them on top of what they're already doing um but if you're fully fully invested in in, in doing this then you know find find your way like just yeah. you just got to make it work i mean it's everybody has done that you ask anybody that's successful in the industry they've had their ups and downs their strives um their family stories about you know what they've gone through you know some good some bad everybody has a freaking story uh everybody has a story that's made it uh and they're all pretty interesting in their own rights mm -hmm. so uh hopefully yours if you're struggling out there becomes an interesting story because i'd love to hear it yeah, I would love to. Yeah, that's what it ends up being, right? That time where you get to finally look back and uh, and see how far you've come just by taking one step at a time. So uh, we we've gone over an hour now, so I think we should probably we should probably wrap it. I know we can keep going, but um, I want to thank everyone for watching and chiming in with questions. I think uh, that hopefully this has provided some value. You know, the information that uh, two 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 awesome people in the industry have been providing for you guys. Um, anything you want to say before we sign off? Tony Merwin asked, where'd you get all that riz? Uh, <laughs> Tony, you're two, one. Oh, uh, I love my man. You're, Tony. you're, you're over, you're like, you're too geriatric to say. No, no, dude. Riz. You sound like my son, dude. My son says that shit to me all the time. <laughs> Dad, stop using those terms. Cap. That's not, that's cap, bro. Cap. Oh my goodness, Eric. Uh, so I am, uh, I am proudly a millennial, and um, like the Gen Z slogan is still not fully embedded yeah. in my vocabulary. But come on, man. Guys. Well, a lot of this new slang that's coming out right now is Gen Alpha, dude. It's Gen Alpha slang that's coming out. What is what's, Alpha. like? Like, give me one. Like, um, well, Riz. Riz, that's, a, that that's definitely alpha? a that's definitely a Gen Alpha term. They got they started with that song, Giat, Giat, sticking out your Giat <laughs> for the Rizzler. You're so skibbity. You're so Phantom Tax. Phantom Tax. That's so yeah. oh my. So I do watch all that like streamers and stuff because I think it's super interesting. It's like, you know how Mr. Beast studied a whole bunch of YouTubers yeah. and then made his um channel. He became Mr. Beast by just studying like that. Another yeah. testament to if you guys are struggling out there, you know, learn some stuff and apply it, right? Yeah. Mr. Beast is a great example. Um, but the fan, I still do watch that stuff. I'm not going to lie. I love AMP and watching that kind of stuff. But um, <laughs> that's, man, that's so funny. But anyways, Tony, to answer your question, uh, where'd you get all that Riz? I got yeah. mad Riz, bro. I got red. What does my kid always say? You got L Riz? You got L Riz. Dead. Hey, w in the chat. W in the chat for W Riz. W yeah, Riz. I got W Riz. I tell him all the time. I don't, I I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm just Sigma. Trying to YouTuber. I'm Sigma, son. <laughs> so shut up, uh, dude. You're not that much younger than me. Shut up. You don't know why you. I, I know. Right. It's just. It's just. It's just like it, I, you have a kid. I mean, I. What, I'm 34 years old, so I should definitely shouldn't be saying this kind of stuff. But um, <laughs> yeah, you do. But, you're, but you have a yeah, but you have a 10 year old kid, so I get it. <laughs> I don't have any kids, so it's weird for me. But I'm still locked into both generations, I guess. I don't know, but I just don't. <laughs> I I think I think you're too old to be saying that, both of you guys. So shut that's, up. That's I'll say what I, I want to say. It's America. <laughs> say what I want. It is say. America. You're just gonna get uh, uh you know just criticized. Yeah. But I don't care. They can criticize me all they want. There you go. All right, I'll be the first. I'll bring up another. Um, I'll bring up an old school slang. They're whack. <laughs> They're whack, bro. It's just whack. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, dude. All right, all right, right. We should probably wrap. Uh, again, right. thanks, guys. We'll see you guys on the next video. Take care. See you guys.